our buyers, our clients are buying a home, a very expensive home, and the sellers had to do a rent back because they're purchasing another home, but they need the proceeds before the close. And what they're doing is closing uh, on this home that my buyers are gonna be moving into, but need a rent back for 10 days. And that creates kind of a, a landlord tenant situation. Good afternoon, everyone. Ken Angst, Hope Properties MV, the Angst Real Estate team. Welcome back to our weekly podcast. Uh, we cover everything that has to do with real estate in Northern Nevada. And we're having one of our favorite guests back. Her name is Jane Mortimer with Allstate. Hi, Ken. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? I'm well, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming back. Me. <laughs> Thanks for coming back in. Uh, Jane does everything about uh, insurance and is one of our preferred uh, providers. Of course, she's helping a lot of our clients out right now. Um, and we're kind of covering a topic that came up on one of our um, buyers situations when we we're buying a home here recently. And what the situation was is uh, our buyers, our clients are buying a home, a very expensive home, and the sellers had to do a rent back because they're purchasing another home, but they need the proceeds before the close. And what they're doing is closing uh, on this home that my buyers are gonna be moving into, but need a rent back for 10 days. And that creates kind of a, a landlord tenant situation and it kind of switches the insurance around. So uh, we wanted to bring Jane in and kind of get the lowdown on if you're in that situation, what to do. So, um, Absolutely. Jane, if you um, can talk about from the buyer's perspective as well as there's dangers for the seller. Absolutely. So um, I know that this happens a lot when um, somebody's purchasing a house, but the seller needs to rent back for say 10, 15 days. Um, what they need to do, what I recommend or my customers do at that point, when you purchase a homeowner's policy, it's for that you're the owner of the home and you occupy the home. But if you then have someone else living in that home for 10 days, it changes the dynamic of it. And now you actually have a tenant in there. So you really need to purchase a temporary landlord's policy for that time because it is a different type of exposure. Um, on the other side, on the, the um, seller side, once they've sold that home and they no longer own it, they no longer own that home, they then, that null and voids their homeowner's policy. And at that point, they cannot just presume their current homeowners is gonna to continue to cover them. What they need to do at that point is to get a separate renter's policy to cover their contents. So from the um, seller's perspective, they need a temporary renter's policy. Um, from the new homeowner's policy, uh, perspective, they need to get a temporary landlord's policy. Right, and these are all good points because uh, once that house closes, it is a different uh, dynamic in the sense that uh, the buyer becomes the landlord and the seller becomes the tenant. So that's a different right. uh, scenario that, and it is all spelled out. We have a short term uh, rent back agreement, but it kind of spells out all this information. But, one of the things that a lot of realtors don't know and you know the average consumer is you better have your ducks in a row on the liability and, and, and the belongings, particularly since in the short term rent back, it does state that the new buyers are not responsible for any of the seller's belongings, personal belongings, if something happens during that rent back. Exactly. That, that's, that's exactly right because you can't just presume that your current insurance that you've had for a while on your home is going to continue to protect you because now you your it's 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 all about insurable interest right you no longer own that home so your current home and his contract is kind of null and void and as the new owner of that home you basically um, are the new owner, you purchase it, but then technically you're not occupying that home for that time being, you have a tenant. 
So that's why I recommend that temporary policy. But yeah, on both sides, you, you really have to be aware of that because you don't want a claim to happen and find out that you're, uh, you're going to get that claim denied. Right. And then one last thing, Jane, I know you're busy. I'll let you go. But um, can you kind of tell us approximately, I don't want to pin you down exactly the cost, but these aren't very expensive, Mark, correct? Mm -hmm. No. Landlord's policies are very inexpensive. Um, anywhere from, you might just, as I say, temporarily have to get it for, say, a, a month or so. Um, maybe it's $50, $50, $60 a month. And renter's insurance is very cheap. That can vary from anywhere $15, $20, you know, for the month. Um, so, yeah, very inexpensive, but right. much better way to protect yourself properly. And then what happens, Jane, is when we do end up uh, switching and the seller moves out, then does the other policy just kick right in? Is that how it works? Yeah, you'd probably already have the homeowner policy in place, but that landlord's policy, once everything's changed, the tenant is out, you would just then at that point go ahead and um, cancel that policy. Great. And just continue the home. Well, I just thought it was an important point and I wanted to bring you in to kind of talk about it because um, especially right now, a lot of people are trying to move up or move out of houses into a different one. And we've actually been coming across this quite a bit. And we just want to make sure that, you know, all of our clients, um, including the other uh, party is protected. So if something, God forbid, does happen, they're covered. Absolutely, Ken, it is wise to be aware of that because I do see it a lot in uh, my line of business. And so my bottom line is just making sure everybody is on the same page, everybody understands and they get the proper protection that they need. Great. Well, Jane, uh, thanks for coming in and covering this topic. Uh, we'll put your information uh, in the video so people can call you. She's one of the best uh, insurance agents in town. And from based on our experience, she helps a lot of our clients and she has very good rates. And the best thing is that um, you're not going to be just rushed through and you don't have to call a number. You actually get to talk to Jane here locally. So that's a big thing for our businesses to support local and to have someone that's super knowledgeable. So we appreciate you uh, coming in though. Oh, thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. Have a great day. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Bye.